Number 7. Loop Garu or Rue Garu from Cajun Folklore Loop Garu is the French word for werewolves and the stories of the Loup Garou remained in the folklore of Cajun French Louisiana. The story of the Loup Garou is believed to have manifested in the medieval France told to children to scare them into staying away from the woods at night. And that story is believed to have followed the French settlers to the US, which is now commonly called the Rue Garou. The Rue Garou is the type of werewolf with a humanoid body. They have their sanity and is completely aware of themselves when they turn, but the urge to kill is heightened. To kill for food. They also have enhanced physical abilities such as strength, speed, better senses, anything for hunting better. From legends, most of them seems to say that people turn into a Rugaru because of a curse. A curse that can be passed on to other people. The origin of the curse seems to be either from a witch or is automatic if you don't observe the rules of land for seven years in a row. So you guessed it, the origin is technically unknown. Anyways, the legend says that when a person comes in contact with the Rugaru and manages to shed the beast's blood, the Rugaru will turn back into human. The person that managed to make the beast bleed is then cursed into being a Rugaru for 101 nights. The curse would only become permanent if the person tells others of their situation. Number 6. Stoop from German Folklore First of all, I'd like to thank Moritz Krauss for talking about the species of werewolf in the comments. Very interesting, I must say. Now, this werewolf is quite a weird one. It's not the typical werewolf that claws and bites. Nope, it likes to stay hidden in the dark, lurking, waiting for a possible victim to cross upon its path. It would even sit in the form of a small dog, harmlessly waiting by the wayside. But when it sees a lone traveler, especially weary ones, it would jump onto the victim, clinging on them, slowly growing larger with every step, larger and heavier, until snap. The person below it breaks because of the pressure. There's another version of a werewolf from Germany, which is similar but a bit milder than the stoop called the Boxen Wolf. Yes, it would pounce on the victim and cling onto them, but rather than crushing them to death, it would rob the victim and run. In one folklore, the Boxen Wolf was a man that had a magical belt. That belt gave him powers to shapeshift, and he used that power to rob people. Number 5. Jerouge from Haitian Folklore Jerouge means red eyes, and they are a vampire werewolf spirit hybrid that only feeds on human blood. As a spirit, it would possess people at night and cause them to transform into a wolf, a talking wolf. They like children, but they are bound by a certain rule. The rule is to ask the permission from the child's mother to feed, so they usually come at night when people are sleeping maybe even stand near the bedside, staring, waiting for the right moment, and then it whispered the question, Can I? While trying to be as ambiguous as it can be. This is when the mother, half asleep, would mumble a yes or no. If the answer is no, the kid's lucky. If the answer is yes, it would proceed on sucking the blood of the child, and sometimes, once the child dies, it would drag the body to a nearby pack of wolves and let them eat the child. Number 4. Lob Omre from Spanish Folklore Most legends of werewolves seems to be talking about male werewolves, but the Lob Omre is usually female and rather than going out and about killing humans, it likes gemstones. The legend of the Lob Omre for me is a rather sad and confusing one. The Lob Omre is usually cursed by their own parent because of something they do. I guess it's one of those stories to scare children with. So once upon a time, there was a girl. The girl seems like a normal girl, but she has a huge love for eating meat. Raw meat. So much so, all she wanted to do was eat meat and nothing else. One day, the father couldn't stand the sight of his daughter being lazy and the sight of her eating raw meat. He got mad. So mad. He banished and cursed his daughter into the mountains so she could live with the wolves and eat flesh to her heart's content. Apparently, what the girl loved wasn't really meat. It was the sight of the raw meat, which is pretty similar to beautiful gemstones. Number 3. Wapowat from Ancient Egyptian Mythology The wolf god, a deity associated with Lycopolis, 
aka the city of wolves in Upper Egypt during the Greco-Roman period. Oftentimes, it is confused with the god Anubis because of its depiction as a man with the head of a canine, but the Anubis has the head of a jackal while the wolf poet a wolf. His name means the opener of ways, a god that guided souls of the dead to and through Duat aka Purgatory. Thus, another similarity what Bawad has with Anubis. He actually started as a war deity and was seen as a scout to make a way or route for the army to proceed forward. But seeing how war and death is always together, he became the guide for Duat. So why is he a werewolf? Well, because human body and wolf head. Number 2. King Lycaon from Greek Mythology he was the king of Arcadia that was known to be impious and cruel. Figuratively, Lycaon was a beast even before turning into one because of his cruelty and for having 50 offsprings and various wives. Before he and his sons neglected their responsibilities and faith, he was the one who made Arcadia prosper and erected many temples for his people to worship Zeus. But because of this neglect, Zeus decided to come down from Olympus dressed as a peasant to put Lycaon to a special test. Zeus came knocking on the palace doors and, because King Lycaon was a perceptive and intelligent man, he actually figured out that it wasn't just a mere peasant, but Zeus. So he welcomed the visitor generously and gave the best hospitality he could offer. However, he also wanted to test Zeus to see if Zeus is really omniscient. So he killed his own son and made a dish out of him to serve Zeus. Of course, Zeus knew about this and, Filled with divine wrath, he punished Lycaon and the rest of his sons into wolves. He then resurrected the dead son and made him king of Arcadia instead. Number 1. Werewolves of Ossuri from Irish Folklore Before the extinction of wolves in Ireland, there was quite a collection of werewolf legends in the Irish folklore and mythology. But the most talked about is the werewolves of Ossuri. Ossory being a medieval Irish kingdom which is located in most of present-day County Kilkenny and some of western County Lois. It was said that the people of Ossory can transform into a wolf while still having the sanity of a human, just like the tribe of Legnick Felids. The legendary tribe of Legnick Felid were warriors. They were said to always be dressed in wolf skins, very brutal, and would transform into beasts in battle. They were mercenaries, and they would fight for any kings as long as they were paid with the flesh of newborns. But anyways, back to the werewolves of Ossory. They were normal people, except for the shape-shifting ability, and it's not just the normal shape-shifting ability, it's a bit like the Selkies, because they need a wolf skin to transform. Now, the people of Ossory were subjected to a curse that every seven years, two of their descendants, one man and one woman, no matter the age, will be compelled to turn into wolves and live in the woods. After seven years of being a wolf and if they survived, they can go back to their human lives and by then, two others will be compelled to turn into wolves. Is this curse still around? Seeing how wolves are extinct in Ireland, maybe they're forever gone. <laughs> 